or it takes 20 years for an overnight success to be one. So it's all about hard work and perseverance. We've got to be prepared to do that. And if you're prepared to put in the hard work, you're prepared to persevere, it'll always pay off in the end. So joining me on the line today, I've got Neville Samuels from Virtual Staff 365. Uh, how you going, Neville? Hi, David. How are you? Going well, going well. Maybe Good. start with a bit of an intro. Who you are, what you do. Sure. Thanks, David. Um, my business is Virtual Staff 365, as you said. I, um, it was spawned out of a previous business that we closed down at the end of 2015, or rather the business closed us down. Um, but what we do is we help Australian businesses to find the right outsourcing solution. Sometimes it's with us where we help clients find staff that work uh, from the comfort of their homes. Yep. And sometimes we introduce our clients to office-based outsourcing solutions where we can't help. Fantastic. So tell me a bit about your journey. So, you know, during this uh, COVID experience that we were all going through, what, what are you doing to sort of handle the economic climate that we're in? Gee, it was tough, David. Um, the last few weeks of April, last few weeks of March, beginning of April, the phone, every time the phone rang, it was clients wanting to just switch off. And yep. it, was, uh, it was certainly a tough time. Um, and I, to be honest, I made an internal decision to never dodge a call because I knew it was always worse for the other person. But every, that every call was the same from every client. Yeah. Um, it was very tough, but at the same time, I knew I had to help my clients go through the process and help them as much as possible mm -hmm. so that if, the, if we could get them through it, hopefully they'd come back to us. Yeah. So that was my focus. My focus was to look after my clients as best as possible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is a tough time for everyone and most people are looking for a bit of compassion because they're having a bit of a panic attack. They're uncertain of the future. And um, I suppose it's just really dealing with that emotion, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, someone asked me a while ago about this corona period and I said to them, I actually went through my coronavirus experience back in 2015 when together with a business partner, we actually had to put our business into administration. We lost everything. Right. So, so it was, I call it my coronavirus moment because I know a lot of people going through the same thing right now. Yeah. And having gone through it four years ago, I kind of feel a bit fortunate having navigated the process a long time ago. And I feel a lot more resilient for it mm. because I know what I did wrong and I know what I did right. And that's changed the way I've dealt with it in this period. Yeah. yeah because better. what I did wrong in that time was I didn't talk to anyone about it. I didn't realize there were people out there that could help. I didn't look for compassion. Um, I kind of just internalized it. And to be honest, for the entire year of 2015, I didn't sleep at night. Yeah. I'd wake up every night at 2 a.m. And I was awake for the rest of the night, stressing and going through the anxiety of it all. Right. And once we made the decision to put the business into administration, and I realized that I was moving on from that period. That was the first time I actually slept properly in 2015. <laughs> because I could then tell people about it. It, was, yeah. it became public knowledge. I could talk to friends and family about it. And I got a tremendous amount of support. But I wasn't, I wasn't able to get that support earlier. And, and I actually think in coronavirus, in, in this, during this pandemic, yeah. it's so different because everyone's going through similar things yeah it, no one can look at it and or should be looking at it from a personal perspective and saying they've messed up yeah you know or things have gone against them things have gone against everyone yes yeah. so from my learning is that in actual fact now's the time to talk about it yeah. get help there are so many places where we can get help both personally whether it's psychologists, therapists, counselors, business coaches like yourself, Outcomes Business Group is a great place 
to get some help. Yeah. But also we're able to now talk to our friends about what we're going through. There's no shame in saying, I've got no sales. Yeah. I, I mean, David, one of the funny things is I walk my dog in the park and talking to people. And this was in April. I said, how's business going? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm down 50%. He said, oh, I'm down 75. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so there's this right? instead of one upmanship it's like one downmanship it's okay to be failing in this time and for me what i'm realizing is that's okay yeah um you, you know we, we also can't um you, none of us could have ever in my view uh, uh, prepared for this businesses that have disappeared to me, it's like a coin toss. A coin toss. Yeah. You know, someone in travel, boom, they're gone. Yeah. Someone in retail, booming. E-commerce, booming. It's just yeah. no matter. So, so there's no shame in it. There's no fear. I think in talking about the problems we're all experiencing. And you know, the funny thing about these problems that you mentioned is, you know, it's, it's not it's not how many times you fall over. It's how many times you get back up. And, uh, you know, often people sort of look at this and, and they say how terrible this is for business. And I, I look at it as change. And you can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow at the best of time, let alone now. Um, what yeah. you can do is have a guess and have a go. And if you make the wrong decision, you change. Right? You, you're quite right. And yeah. it, it's hard for people when they're in the thick of it yeah. to recognise that just because one door is closing doesn't mean another one isn't opening because that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. And in, in my personal experience, I, I needed three months. Yeah. From the time we put our business into administration to the time I was able to start looking at opportunities and actually not just looking, but actually seeing opportunities yeah. and starting to chase them. It took me three months of gathering my thoughts and collecting myself yeah. mentally and getting back on the horse. And that, it's so important to do that. And to recognize that the previous experiences are the learnings that we have to take us forward into the next experience. Yeah. It's very hard looking back and saying, gee, I've lost everything that I've been working so hard to, to achieve. But at the same time, you've just got to look out there for other opportunities and be talking to people and even telling people that that's what you're doing. But tell me a bit about what opportunities you see right now. <sighs> <laughs> Um, I, I've got so many opportunities right now. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to grapple all of them at once. Right. Um, so um, one of the things we're looking at is we're about to start an, a service of providing bookkeepers to bookkeepers and accounting firms. Right. And this is something that came out during COVID. Yep. Someone introduced me to, um, to someone in Sydney, and I'm based in Melbourne. Someone introduced me to someone in Sydney, Mm. who was supposedly running an outsourced business of accounting in South Africa. Yep. And I said, well, let me have a chat to him. And we started chatting. This was all over Zoom and phone calls. One thing's led to another. We're starting a joint venture because he's not doing it, but he's got the resources available. There you go. And I said, let's do this here. But Neville, I can't sell. I'm very good with the detail. I work with these people in South Africa and they help me with yep. my work. I said to them, well, that's perfect because that's exactly the gap in my <laughs> toolbox is I don't have the time or the interest in getting involved in the detail. Yeah. I like the business development side of it. So we're starting something there. And then someone yeah. else has come to me with some technology that he has seen mm -hmm. and the technology needs people. Yeah. And he said to me, Neville, let's do this together. Um, you provide the people, I'll provide the technology. Let's see if we can start something and he's just come with his first client right so there are opportunities coming in lots of different areas and yep. i think a lot of it's got to do with the fact that with in this covid period yeah we're all starting to realize that how we all thought we had to work and that was going into the office and working in the office and we had to do it in a certain way those rules don't apply anymore we're starting to realize we can work from home Maybe we can work in a co-working space. Yeah. Um, Even the meeting with the guy in Sydney you had over Zoom. You didn't have to travel to Sydney. Correct. Correct. Uh, and the same with my team in the Philippines. I'm, I'm not rushing to see them either. But no. the point is business opportunities are springing up in lots of different places if we open to it. 
and yeah. I'm sure even the the, the the Sydney element would be opening itself up to yourself as well. Yeah. You're not fixed to to just working in the office. Yeah, well, we, we, we I spend a lot more time in the office these days because I'm sitting in front of this camera all day. Right. But, um, we're reaching, we're reaching internationally, we're reaching yeah. nationally, and uh, we're doing it at the fraction of the cost of what we used to have to do. So we don't have to travel. Even our events now, we're running them all online, so don't have to book a venue, don't have to pay for breakfast. Um, so it has changed the way we do business, and uh, it's actually proven to be a more lucrative way of doing what we do. Tell me, um, what yeah. what are the personal lessons you're taking out of this event? Um, from a personal perspective, it's about looking, it's, it's personal and business. From a, Personally, I am talking more about what's going on in my business. Mm. I'm able to offload, I'm able to uh, let go of certain information that I was never able to do before. Yeah. So when business was down 50% in April, I, in the past, I would never have spoken about it. Right. But I now have that ability to recognize that it's it's okay. Yep. It, it's okay to do, it's okay that it's happening. It's okay to talk about it. And that's allowing me to talk about other things as well in my business as to what's going on. Yeah, okay. And sometimes they're positives and sometimes they're negatives. That's oh. a that's a big personal learning for me. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Can I ask you a bigger of course, question. We want to make sure that our friend Yeah. Sorry. Sure. Obviously, you, you've had a lot of experience in business and you've uh, sort of had some ups and downs and you, you're sort of quite comfortable talking about, you know, putting a business into uh, liquidation. Um, tell me a bit about uh, the best piece of business advice you've ever received. Best piece of business advice? Um, to go with your, it's, it's, it's very simple, but it's about going with your gut feel. To me, always go with your gut feel. And, and I remember even when I started this business and my wife would always challenge me on it because she never saw the opportunity in which I did. And to me, it was all about going with my gut feel and yeah. what it was telling me. And I'd even, I'd even go further back about nine months before we put our business into liquidation. Yeah. Um, to me, the writing was on the wall. My yeah. gut was already telling me we had to get out of it, but I couldn't do it. Okay. And it's really about going with your gut feel and not so, sort of second guessing, just really going with that and not taking the, not taking that time. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it, it, it's a very simple thing. Yeah. But sometimes, even when we're talking to someone, we want to work with someone. Um, if your gut's telling you it's not right to do it with that person for whatever yeah. reason, um, go with that feeling and. I read somewhere that gut feel, it's not just a feeling inside, but gut feel is actually based on past experiences. Yes. And I'm not, I haven't quite convinced myself of that because I can never relate it back to a, 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 a previous experience as to why I've got that feeling. Well, that's why it's called gut feel, right? <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but I trust, I've learned to trust my gut feel. Yeah. And, and, and that's the way I work. Fantastic. So tell me a bit about books. Like, is there a favorite book that you've read about business or anything in that space? Yeah, I've just finished reading a book by Bob Iger from, uh, he's the president of Disney. Yeah. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a great read. It was a great story of how he started from being on the stage crew and worked his way up. Mm-hmm. But I didn't learn much about anything in business. It was just a great read because yeah. I know about Star Wars and Pixar and Steve Jobs. Probably yeah. the best book I've, I've read in business is a book I read about 15 years ago by Rudy Giuliani called Leadership. Yeah. And it was his time as the mayor of New York. And I've always kept the things that he talks about in that book, I've kept in my mind, I've tried to apply in business about working with a team of people and about accountability and being accountable to those people and those people being accountable back to us. Fantastic. And it, it, to be honest, it kills me sometimes when I watch CNN and I see Rudy Giuliani dealing in politics because he was so good as the mayor of New York. And in that arena, he was just brilliant. Yep. That to me, um, is, it's a great read for anyone and I highly recommend it. Fantastic, fantastic. 
Look, one last question for you. Um, what's the number one piece of advice you'd give to a business owner who's um, right now? Like, what would you what would you advise people to do? Um, I mean, my, my piece of advice to anyone is that Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. And we also hear it in another way where we hear about overnight successes, or it takes 20 years for an overnight success to be one. So it's all about hard work and perseverance. We've got to be prepared to do that. And if you're prepared to put in the hard work, you're prepared to persevere, it'll always pay off in the end. Yeah, fantastic. That's sage advice for someone who's been through the wars as well, huh? I've had to work really, really hard. And even when things have failed, um, you get back on your horse and you work hard and you look back. And I mean, even when I look back after when COVID hit and my business went back 50%, went back two years, of, you know, it kills me to think that all that hard work has, has disappeared. But mm. you know what? It, it, it can bounce back and it can bounce back better than ever. Yeah. And that's what we're starting to see on our side. So uh, you know, you, you never put in the hard work for no for, for nothing. It always, what you put out in the universe will come back to you somehow. Fantastic. <clears throat> All right, Neville, look, thanks very much for your time today. I'm conscious of time and trying to keep these uh, short and punchy. Really, some really good advice in there. Really appreciate your input. So thank you. Thank you very much, David. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Cheers.